And imagine going through that day, nobody sees you. You walk through the city and everybody avoids you. That sounds like a nightmare, but it is what we do to the many people that live on the, live on the streets of our city. They go through many days without being acknowledged. About a year ago, I moved to San Francisco from Amsterdam so my husband could work at Google. <laughs> and I thought I was going to find a cool tech job myself too. But I was so touched by the social inequality I found in this city that not Silicon Valley, but the Tenderloin became my new home. I started teaching yoga and meditation at the Healing Well, and I started volunteering at the Senior Center. And I started writing about my experiences there, among other things, for a blog and a book called Stories Behind the Fog, where we uncover a hundred stories of homeless people. And because I'm so touched by the things I've learned through these stories, I want to share five of them with you tonight. The first story I want to share with you is about Bonnie. She became homeless a few months ago after leaving an abusive husband. And she's now on the streets with her two service dogs. Bonnie never ex expected to end up like this because she has a college degree and she used to have a catering business that had, among others, the Clintons as their clients. And now that she's homeless and she's very sick, life is very hard on her. But what gets her through the day is the idea that one day she'll be able to use this experience, use her intellect, use her loud mouth to make a difference for people that are going through this experience as well and are less vocal than she is. I also want to introduce you to a man named Cyrus. He is from Iran and he learned the English language by reading Shakespeare. <laughs> and because I'm a European, he asked me what I thought when the UK was leaving the European Union. And I started talking about Brexit. And I said, I don't care about your opinion. I want to know what led to this event. And I started talking. He said, not, not in the last 30 days, historically, like in the last 30 years or so. Cyrus is also very much involved in the election. And he even created a website called whosaidso.org, where he makes uh, has an algorithm that makes a list of every significant term in the speeches of Trump and Clinton and compares them side by side for a much needed neutral overview of what's going on in this country. This is Mohammed. A few weeks ago, he walked up to me and without warning, he lifted his cap and showed me a huge scar from ear to ear. He just had a brain tumor removed uh, because he was in the hospital and he had a wound above his eye and they discovered the tumor. And I asked him how he was dealing with this hardship. He told me he trusted in the guiding hands of God, as he had done throughout his whole life. And for me, with all these conflicts we have in the world, amongst, between religious groups, this image, this simple image of the guiding hands of God, was such a powerful reminder of what religion really means, and what it can do for people that are going through difficult times. I also often ask the people I work with what they think are the solutions to our homelessness crisis. And Don, one of my yoga students, had a very painful answer. He compared being homeless to being addicted. He said, you're always looking for the next fix, whether it's the next meal or the next place to sleep. But what you really need is to start planning for the long term. But you just don't have the bandwidth to do that. There are a lot of hopeless cases, he said, but there are also many people that are just one incredibly complicated form away from a stable housing situation. So stop handing out food, he told me and start helping these people, give them the kick in the butt that they really need to get their lives back together. Lastly, I want to introduce you to Cherry. Cherry spent 23 years of her life in a Californian prison for conspiracy for murder. And now she's trying to get her life back together, find a job, find a place to stay. And she's also setting up a foundation to help young women at risk. I asked Cherry what people like you and me could do to help the homeless people on the streets. And she said, don't stereotype people. Just take the time to say good morning and ask how they're doing. A lot of them are very lonely and some are about to give up. If you just smile at them and acknowledge them as a fellow human being, that can make a difference in someone's life. Thank you.